Hello everybody, so today I'm going to be showing you my collection of technology. This is everything I have, so let's dive in. So here is my phones we're going to start with. So here is my main phone, my daily driver. It's an iPhone 6 running iOS 12.0, 64GB Space Gray for AT&T. It's not in good condition because I own it, and it's my main phone, so I've dropped it a lot. The screen is quite scratched. The volume buttons are like jammed, but they still work. I've kind of just gotten used to using this. But yeah, it works, and it is my main phone, so that's that. And then I have this also beat up case for it that I use on my phone. So here is an iPhone 5C I got from my grandma when she upgraded. It is 16 gigabytes. It's in basically perfect condition, except for like a minor scratch down here. And that's just because the um, case is kind of breaking at the bottom, so that's probably why. There's also some discoloration. You can't really see it too well, but... Well, on the camera, but in real life you can. There's like not a scratch on the screen. It always had a screen protector. Fully functional iPhone 5C. So that's really cool. And then it's an OtterBox. Not the Defender. The Commuter, I think. Which, you can see it's breaking at the bottom, so that's probably why I got that scratch. Then here we have my iPhone 4S, 32 gigabytes running iOS 6.1.3 because you can downgrade it with iTunes. So that's really, really cool. Um, it's bad IMEI though for AT&T, so you can't use it on a cellular, but I got it for $22 because of that and downgraded it. So yeah, really, really cool. I use this for music. And then I have an OtterBox and a glitter case, which I both got for my sister because her old phone was a 4S. And then uh, here's an iPhone 3G. The back's got a lot of cracks, which is normal for this model. And it's missing like that ring around here, but it doesn't really matter. It has a brand new digitizer. It also needs volume buttons. I need to work on that. But it's got a brand new digitizer, so once I replace the volume buttons, the only thing is that you had to press the home button kind of hard. But everything works. It's for AT&T and it's 8 gigabytes, and it's running the latest supported 4.2.1 because I was having a hard time putting into DFU mode to downgrade it. Um, then right here we have my Samsung Galaxy S2. This is a fully working phone. It's in basically new condition. I forgot to take the case off, but you can see basically not a scratch on it, especially for the age. It's pretty impressive. And it's fully working. I have a custom launcher on it, so it's faster. Obviously slow today, but it's still a really, really cool phone. Then it has this little case. This is my Target bin phone. Speaking of Target bin phones, I did have another 5C, if you remember. Um, but I traded that just today for a laptop, which I'll show you in a second. And then my last phone here is a BlackBerry Curve 8310. It works, but it is out of batteries at the moment. But it's fully functional, and it's in basically like mint condition. Considering its age, there's some scratches on the plastic, but it's glossy plastic, so that makes sense. The keys are in pretty good condition, too, surprisingly. And it's like a clip case, which is kind of cracked, but it still works. So yeah, those are my phones. So here are my tablets. I only have two at the moment. This is my iPad Mini first generation, which we've had this since launch. It was my parents, and now it is mine. It is fully working on iOS 9.3.5, but I use it for school, that's why I got it for my mom. It's in, it was in like new condition, but there is some scratches since I've been taking it to school. Looks like there's a bit of a dent there that I never noticed. 16 gigabytes. Um, there is some LCD burn. I find that like, if you have it sitting on one screen, it'll burn the image in, but then it'll go away as you use it. It's kind of weird like that, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on. But then here's my Kindle Paperwhite. Um, this is the third generation, I believe. It's the one that came out in 2015. It is fully functional. I use it for reading, for fun. Although at school I cannot use this, so I use the Kindle app on my iPad. But these are definitely really good on your eyes and stuff, and I like them. So yeah, I have one of these. It's in basically new condition. The devices that I use tend to get in pretty bad condition that aren't in my collection. But this one, you know, it doesn't really go many places. It's in good condition. Um, you know, a few scratches up here, but I only take it out of the case to clean it, so that's basically new condition. 
It has a leather case from Amazon on it, which is definitely scratched up and stuff and beat up, but it protects my Kindle, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> So here we have my iPods. So we have an iPod Touch 4, 32 gigabytes here, which I got for $40. Unfortunately, it's gotten very messed up now, which I think is related to jailbreaking. I'm not really sure what I did necessarily, but it'll always like go into restore to iTunes. Sometimes it'll restore and then it'll brick itself again. So it's basically for parts now. It's quite scratched as well. Really sucks, but that's that. And then here we have an um, iPod Touch 4th generation with a bad backlight. You can hear. Still works. Um, it's a motherboard issue though. So that sucks. And I, yeah, this is 16 gigabyte. It was a motherboard slot, swap. So it says 8 gigs, but it's actually 16 gigabytes. Sorry, I was drawing a blank. But yeah, you can see it's very beat up. I just lost the, <laughs> there's the home button. Here is... Another one with the same exact issue. This is 8 gigabytes, like it says on the back somewhere. And this one actually has a 5.1.1 SHSH blob saved, although I couldn't retrieve it from iFaith for some reason. Um, but we'll see. Um, but it does have motherboard backlight issues, which are very hard repairs. I got those very, very cheap, though. Here, I got this one recently. This is an iPod Nano 4, and it's in basically new condition. Like... The battery's not great because it's old, but there's only some minor scuffs down here. Probably because this case moves around because it's a silicone case. It probably got nicked up. Battery's not great, but it works perfectly and it's in perfect condition. And then we have an iPod Nano first generation, so the original one. Um, it's fully functional, but there's no battery in it, so... Obviously, it can't really be practically used. Of course, I can't use it anyways because I use Spotify. But if I plug into my power bank here, you can see it does work totally fine. It's not in the greatest of condition, but it does work, so that's really cool. And it's the first generation, so definitely, definitely one of my favorites. But I think my favorite out of these iPods is the Nano 4 because it's in like perfect condition. And not to mention, 16 gigabytes. They're usually very expensive compared to the 8 gigs. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So yeah, those are my music players. So here are my accessories for mostly Apple devices. Except for my cases, because we already went through those. We have an Anchor power bank. I swear they're not sponsoring me, but their power banks are actually really amazing. At least this one is, so... Yeah, I mean... Definitely the best power banks around. Um, this charges my phone several times. Then we have an, you know, usually I'm not going to show all my cables because they're just cables, but this one is cool because it's not only an original Apple one, but it's one of those ones with the, um, you have to pinch it. So yeah, that's pretty cool just because, you know, it's old and stuff and it works too. So then we have my Beats Pill 2.0. It's definitely seen better days. It's got the dents, but that's pretty common. Um, battery life isn't great anymore. But yeah, it's 2.0, has a charge out. Pretty cool, but I don't recommend buying it. It's overpriced. Anyways, then we have... I have two Bluetooth keyboards, but one of them isn't here because I am I just forgot to get it, honestly. This is for my iPad Mini. It's actually a hinged case, keyboard case. Not the most comfortable keyboard, but still really cool for school. I'll usually pull out the other one if I have time, but this one is just always there. You can see it has the hinge. So yeah, that one I use every day. Definitely a very cool keyboard. It's also backlit, but I'm having issues with that right now. But yeah, really, really cool. Um, I guess it's in okay condition. <laughs> I have a bunch of peeling paint on it, but, you know, I take it to school, so. Then we have this Samsung... 30 pin and micro USB docks. You can put both devices in there, and if you need more space, this will go down. Very, very cool. This one sounds excellent. Like, it sounds so much better than my Beats Pill. It's very loud sound, although the Beats Pill doesn't sound particularly great. So, um, yeah, it's... It's really cool. Um, sorry, I just messed up. 
a setting in my camera, I apologize. But yeah, it's fully working. I use this, it sits on my desk. Then we have this one which was used with this Nano when it was my grandma's. Um, but it fully works, it's a cheaper one. It's smaller, of course, but this one sounds much better. So I don't really use this, but it is a fully working dock, so that's cool. So those are my accessories that aren't cases that I thought I should still show you. Obviously, I'm not showing you my chargers, because that's kind of, you know, why would I do that? But yeah, those are my accessories. So here we have other mobile devices that didn't really fit into those categories. So the first stuff is my Nintendo stuff. I'm going to start from the, go to the, uh, the worst to the best. Um, in terms of like how much I use it and stuff. This is a modified Game Boy Light. Game Boy Light. <laughs> DS Light, I apologize. In, turn into a Game Boy Macro basically because it only has one screen. So you can, um, the idea is it still has a Game Boy slot. So you can put Game Boy Advanced or you can use a flash cart and emulate games. Definitely really cool. The way I did it was an anti-solder mod version so it's like everything's so packed in you can't really click the you have to like manually pull out the card but it's pretty cool sound quality isn't great because it can only fit one speaker but yeah definitely pretty cool then we have my DS Lite which was refurbished by me and it does have an aftermarket case if you look closely you can see the Nintendo doesn't look normal also this like slider gets stuck you can just pull it down, it's not a huge deal. And it is fully working, and it's in perfect condition because I had a shell swap. Everything works on this. Although if I press on this part of the screen, it like goes yellow. It's probably just a loose connector or something, but it's not a huge deal. Um, so yeah, and then the main DS that I always use is the new 3DS XL and I'm not much of a video game person you won't find much content like that on my channel but I am a Nintendo person so this is my 3DS XL and it has custom firmware um, and free eShop where you can get free games if you don't know what any of this is you can look it up I don't really feel like explaining it I'm not gonna do tutorials this was very complicated it took me hours to do but I have a lot of games on here definitely takes longer to turn on but yeah countless games on here um, and I also have a modified C-Stick it's like a PS so I'm using my mom's camera and it just died so <laughs> like I was saying I have a custom C-Stick it's like a, a PS Vita I believe I could be wrong I don't remember I just f remembered it at the time it's very easy to do you just pop out the old one place the new one in don't have to disassemble it, and it feels so much more comfortable. So, that's an, that's the only hardware mod. No, okay, there's two hardware mods I have. There's that one, and then there is the no screw mod. So I can easily access the back. It just has double sided tape, which is strong stuff, so it'll hold it in. Um, which is cool, because it's annoying because the SD card's there. So yeah, that's my 3DS. This is what I play most of my games ever on. I play some mobile games, but that's occasional. And then you can see here, um, you can't emulate. Certain games aren't on Virtual Console, so I'll put them on my flash cart, and you can't emulate normal DS games. So that's what the flash cart's for. It has 32 gigabytes of storage, which is the most this one can even support. And yeah, so that's how I get those games for free. If you want a flash cart, go on wish.com. That's where I get them. Like I got you can get them for six dollars if you look clo close enough, although they take forever to ship. Then I have this one, which is there's no SD card in it at the moment, but it's just an extra one. And then I have wow, I landed that perfectly. Then I have Mario Kart DS because Mario Kart's amazing. And then I have this I originally got for a DSI I used to have. Um but it stretches out to fit my new 3DS XL. I am struggling with this so much. Okay. So, yeah, extra stylus. I do have extra styluses for DS Lite as well, but they're not, you know, there. Nothing special about it. It's just a DS case. And then we have, which this is a, what I film most of my videos on, 
Well, not most. I film either on this or on my iPhone 6. This, like for my destruction videos, I will film on this. That second... Actually, both... No, the second water test, or part three of my phone destruction, was filmed on this. And part four as well, but that wasn't released yet. I don't think at the time of this video being uploaded. Maybe it is. I'm not sure when, what order things will be uploaded in. Anyways, this is in perfect condition. Wait, why did I say that? This is not in perfect condition. This is very beat up. has a screen protector on it. Um, but, you know, GoPros are meant to get beat up, so that's, it's whatever. Um, I got that when it was the latest model, so. And then we have this, which was my grandma's, it's a very old digital camera. Uh, it doesn't take compact flash, and it doesn't take SD. It takes this really, I don't even know what the name is, but it's like really thin and weird. I don't know. If you guys know what this is called, I'd be interested to know. Anyways, those are my extra devices. Now let's move on to my laptops. So real quick, my desktop is my main computer. I'm not showing that here, but it's a Core i3, 4 gigabytes of RAM. It's pretty slow, 1 terabyte of storage, Windows 10. Nothing exciting about it though, and I'm not going to bring it all the way down to here to show you. I'm sorry. But I also frequently use this laptop. Sorry, I'm trying to open it one-handed. This is an HP G62, and it's fully working, except the battery, since this is so old, needs to be replaced. I'm trying not to show my face, because this is so reflective. Um, it's one of those screens. So the battery like lasts like a minute, and then it'll freeze. But this thing... Yeah, I guess it's dead. <laughs> so it's quad-booted with Linux Mint. Ubuntu, oh there it is, uh, yeah, Linux, Mint, Ubuntu, Windows 7, and Windows XP, even though there's not sound driver for it, <laughs> or network driver, but yeah, it is working, it just doesn't have a good battery, so yeah, this is my main laptop, AMD, 6 gigabytes of RAM, it's slow, but you know. So I never showed this on my channel for some reason, but I did get this maybe a week ago. Um, so I'm not sure why I never uploaded a video about it, but this is an HP laptop. It's very old. It's like 16 years old, I believe. It's designed for XP, so you know, it's really, 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 really old. It's 512 megabytes. So it's kind of like a mid-range laptop at the time, which relates, which kind of adds up to a crappy laptop now. Anyways, like a... I forgot to say, this is a um, 250 gigabyte hard drive. This is only 40 gigs, so I was going to put XP on it, but I decided since, you know, no security updates, I wanted to still be able to kind of use it. So it has Lubuntu on it, and it has Windows 7 on it. They both run pretty slowly, but the battery lasts on this thing, so yeah, I've yet to get a good laptop. And then... So I just told you I traded that 5C with a bad digitizer. This is what I traded it for. <laughs> yeah. It's... There's no screws in it right now. My friend gave it to me disassembled. It's kind of a mess right now. The, um... The power in is cut. I need to get a new power in. And... It, it needs work, but... It has 2 gigs of RAM, which is a crap ton for its time, and it's a ThinkPad, so I couldn't say no. It has, it has one of those fancy fingerprint scanners. You know, since I had a 5C of the same kind, I just couldn't resist picking this thing up. And, I mean, it probably will be fine once I replace the um, power thing, so this is really, really cool. It has some missing buttons and stuff. Definitely a mess right now. But anyways, that was my entire collection. Hope you guys enjoyed. I will definitely be getting more as time comes. I believe I'm getting a Kindle. I think first generation. I don't know yet. Anyways, that's all for now. I will see you in my next video. Thanks for watching. Tell me what I can improve on. You know, leave a like if you enjoyed it, but don't just leave a like to be nice. If you think there's something, if you think I did a crappy job, please dislike it. I, I'll dislike your video if it's crappy. So please let me know what I can improve on. Um, 
Anyways, I'll see you in my next video.